We are learning additional details tonight from a man who says the Obama administration knew about classified emails from Hillary Clinton and actually tried to hinder the investigation. He first spoke exclusively to Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge, and tonight she has the new details. With more than two decades of government service, the Obama administration nominated Charles McCullough Inspector General for the 17 intelligence agencies. If you don't have your independence, you have nothing. Few people know more about the classified Clinton emails and the fallout. All of a sudden, people started talking about how independent I was and how wonderful that I was independent. That independence was tested in 2015 after the intelligence agencies found their classified information in the Clinton emails. As word spread, McCullough went to senior officials, including Director of National Intelligence James Clapper. He said this is extremely reckless. And he mentioned something about uh, the campaign would have, uh, will have heartburn. Did you tell the CIA director, John Brennan, that there was classified information? Oh, he already knew. It wasn't me who told him uh, what was happening. He'd already been well briefed on it. After two emails sent by Clinton aides that contained classified information, kick-started the FBI probe. Government records show a senior State Department official who worked for Secretary Clinton allegedly pressed the FBI to downgrade the classification as part of a quid pro quo. Is that how the government's supposed to operate? No, uh, that's, uh, classification is not negotiable. By February 2016, campaign emails released via WikiLeaks suggest Clinton's lawyer and a senior congressional staffer shared information to target McCullough. But I think there was certainly a coordinated strategy. Uh, that I, I, in fact, I, I not only think it, I, I think it uh, very, very much so. A former Clinton campaign spokesman did not return Fox's calls, but in a tweet did not dispute the claims and tried to cast doubt on McCullough's credibility. Fox News also asked about this March 2016 letter from seven senior Democrats, including Senator Dianne Feinstein. It said they had serious concerns about the Clinton email review. Feinstein's office wanted McCullough to respond. The incident turned into a standoff six weeks before the election. And I flat out told the staff director I was not going to respond to it. I said, tell her I'll resign tonight. Senator Feinstein's office did not respond to Fox's questions about McCullough and whether there was a coordinated effort to undermine his office. On Capitol Hill this week, Senator Feinstein told the Daily Caller website she had no idea what McCullough was talking about, Brett. Captain, thank you. You're welcome. A federal jury clearing a Libyan militant of murder charges, ultimately saving him from the death penalty. This after standing trial in connection to the Benghazi terror attack. It left four Americans dead back in 2012, including the U.S. ambassador. That jury did, however, convict him of terrorism. Let's bring in Chris Tonto Peranto, one of the six military contractors who ran into the diplomatic complex in Benghazi while it was under siege and stayed there to fight off the attack for 13 hours. Chris, it's great to have you on this morning. Obviously, yes, you've had some time to digest this news. What is your reaction uh, to the I, verdict? I'm d disgusted. Uh, to be honest with you, it should never got into a criminal court. Um, to allow a terrorist to have due process and to be covered under our Constitution is completely ridiculous. That's why I didn't testify. That's why I didn't testify at the uh, trial because I thought it was a, really a sideshow. This guy, at the very best, Katala should have got a military tribunal. Um, in his case, at the very best. In the very best, in my case, the extraction team should have put a bullet in his head. That's, that's what I think. It's, this is ridiculous. It's Ty a travesty. Tyrone Wood's father, Charles, called the verdict outrageous. He yeah. said it's a miscarriage of justice. A couple other family members have had a chance so far to respond, and they are outraged. It, it, it really shows that there is still no closure for the families. They, they still have not got justice, and, and, and they rightfully so should be angry. Um, you, you don't bring a terrorist and waste taxpayer, taxpayer money and give him a criminal trial. You put him in Gitmo, or you interrogate him, and then you execute him. That's how you deal with terrorists. You take issue with the word mastermind when describing yeah. this terrorist. Yeah. Why? He's a, he's a middle, middle man at best. Um, this guy was no mastermind. Was he there? Yes. Could he have assisted in the planning? Possibly. I'm not going to say he didn't. Uh, was he there, and did he help commit the murders of Ambassador Stevens and Sean Smith? Yes, he did. But to call him a mastermind, no, that was a political ploy. That was so uh, the uh, past administration and Hillary Clinton could put this thing to bed. But because of, of the team speaking up again when that came out, 
uh, it was disputed, and, and again, he's found out to be that just he was just a middleman. Mastermind was just a political ploy by the past administration. Chris, while this is the first time that we've hear, hear, heard you speak following uh, the verdict, on social media last night, you made your views on yeah. this very clear. You said, when, when do terrorists deserve due process? This should not have been reached, uh, it, taken to a criminal court. What's next? Granting terrorists their Miranda rights? I know. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And I, one of your contributors, Rob O'Neill, uh, Navy SEAL Rob O'Neill, we, we're on the same page with that. You, you just, you don't give animals due process. And that's what terrorists are. Uh, and right now, the terrorists are laughing at us. I'm sure, I'm sure right now they're looking at the TV or they're watching their social media or doing what they do and saying, oh, wow, they're going to try us in a criminal court. Why don't we just stop doing terrorist attacks because the Americans are so empathetic? No, we just showed our weakness again. And, and the only way we can stop terrorism is fighting fire with fire and just coming and making it so awful to attack Americans that they're afraid to do it. You've called this a circus show for politicians and called it purely political. I, and I will stick by that. If, if they wanted to do it the right way, again, they would have grabbed him. The CIA and the, and the NSA would have done their interrogation techniques and it would have went to get Mo. This was purely a sideshow, purely something for political gain for the past administration. And I'm going to stick to that, and I always will. That'll never change. What is your message to those who made his extradition possible, those politicians, after we look back at that night and, and the impact that that had on you and the risk that you took and, and, and the fighting the 13 hours that you spent there, what is your <clears throat> message to them? You, you know, I, I would say, you know, especially the defense attorneys, uh, pick them up, drop them in the middle of a firefight with the terrorists, and let's see how their views change. Um, they are so well protected in their cushy seats that they're able to pass judgment. And it's wrong judgment because they don't have the experience. And then to, then to hide behind constitutional laws that we're giving to a terrorist. No, get up there, get out of your seat, and go fight terrorists. And let's see how you feel about that. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, it, it, it disgusts me to this day that I still have to see politicians mm -hmm. and attorneys still trying to to say they know how the world operates and then they're doing something like this they, they don't they need to get out of their their little cushy bubble world there on the beltway and yeah. get out and see how things really great to work get out. your reaction and, this morning chris tanto yeah. pronto and our, our our thoughts and our prayers are still with those families who lost their loved Thanks. ones that night thank you for coming on four months or months after the benghazi tragedy it's a tragedy when we lose four brave americans there are many questions that are unanswered. And the answers, frankly, that you've given this morning are not satisfactory to me. Was, were you and the president made aware of the classified cable from Chris Stevens said that the United States consulate in Benghazi could not survive a sustained assault? Numerous warnings, including personally to me, about the security were unanswered or unaddressed. It took a CNN reporter looking through the consulate to find uh, Chris Stevens' last warning. When were you made aware of that cable? When were you made aware of the attack on the British uh, ambassador and the assassination attempts and the closing of the consulates there? And what actions were taken? What was the President's activities during that seven-hour period? On the anniversary of the worst attack in American history, September 11th, we didn't have Department of Defense forces available for seven hours. Two brave Americans died in the last hour. With all these warnings, all these things took place, we didn't have a single Department of Defense asset apparently available to come to these rescue. I categorically reject your answer to Senator Johnson about well, we didn't ask these survivors who were flown to Ramstein the next day that, they, that this was not a spontaneous demonstration. To say that it's because an investigation was going on? The American people deserve to know answers, and they certainly don't deserve false answers. And the answers that were given the American people on September 15th by the ambassador of the United Nations were false. In fact, contradicted by the classified information which was kept out of the Secretary of the United Nations report, who, by the way, in the President's words, had nothing to do with Benghazi, which questions why she was sent out to start, to start with. 
Why is it that the administration still refuses to provide the full text of emails regarding the deletion of references to al-Qaeda and terrorism in the talking points? Why do we care? Because if the classified information had been included, it gives an entirely different version of events to the American people. You're going to the American people and tell them what happened, then you ought to have your facts straight, including, the ambassador said, quote, al-Qaeda is decimated and our consulates and embassies are secure. So here we are, four months later, and we still don't have the basic information. Now, if you want to go out and tell the American people what happened, you should at least have interviewed the people who were there. Instead of saying, no, we couldn't talk to them because an FBI investigation was going on. Uh, and by the way, as I said at the time, I just happened to be on one of those talk shows, people don't bring RPGs and mortars to spontaneous demonstrations. That's a fundamental. And of course, the president continued to say days afterwards, September the 12th, he made a reference to act of terror. September 12th on 60 Minutes, too early to know. September 20th on Univision, we're still doing an investigation. September 24th on The View, we're still doing an investigation. The President of the United States, as late as September 24th, two weeks later, did not acknowledge that this was an act of terror conducted by people who were at least somehow connected to the Al-Qaeda. Finally, Madam Secretary, I strongly disagree with your depiction of what we did after Gaddafi fell. We did not provide the security that was needed. We did not help them with border security. We did not give them the kind of assistance that would have been necessary to help dismantle these militias that still, to this day, remain a challenge to democracy in Libya and freedom. You knew Chris Stevens very well. I knew him very well. I knew him on July 7th when I went to Libya to observe the elections. And at that time, on July 7th, he expressed to me his deep and grave concerns about security, particularly in Benghazi. And he continued to uh, communicate with the State Department, and I don't know who else was uh, privy to those cables, of his deep concern about the security there and the need for additional assistance. And I will argue with, with, with facts that after that uh, event took place, after the fall of Gaddafi, the, quote, soft footprint was partially, to some degree, responsible for the tragedy that, that took place. The American people and the families of these four brave Americans still have not gotten the answers that they deserve. I hope that they will get them. Well, Senator, I understand your very, very strong feelings. You knew Chris. You were a friend of Chris. You were one of the staunchest supporters of the efforts to um, dislodge uh, Gaddafi and try to give the Libyan people um, a chance. Um, and we just have a disagreement. We have a disagreement about uh, what did happen and when it happened with respect to explaining uh, the sequence of events. Um, we did uh, get to talk to the DS agents when they got back to this country. We did so. It was not before uh, September 15th. We had no access to the surveillance cameras for weeks, which helped to answer uh, a number of questions. Uh, but with respect to helping the Libyans, and that also goes to the, the question Senator uh, Rubio asked, we will provide uh, a, a list of everything we were doing and uh, were attempting to do, but I will also tell you that uh, since March 2011, congressional holds have been placed on programs for many months for aid to Libya. Um, we've had frequent congressional complaints. Why are we doing anything for Libya? It's a wealthy country. It has oil. Disagreement from some sources that we should never have been part of uh, any UN mission uh, in Libya. Um, currently, the House has holds on um, 
uh, bilateral security assistance, on other kinds of support for anti-terrorism assistance. So we got to get our act together between the administration and the Congress. If this is a priority and if we are serious about trying to help this government stand up security and deal with what is a very dangerous environment from east to west, then we have to work together. Um, so I hope that uh, we can have the kind of discussion where we can f agree on certain uh, approaches that will make a difference. We, and I, again, I would urge that you look and read both the classified and unclassified versions of the ARB that tries to deal with the very questions that you and Senator Johnson are raising, the timing of it and the like. Um, but I also hope we're looking forward because right now Libya is still dangerous. It is still in a very unstable status. Um, and whatever we can do for them, we at least ought to agree we need to do and get out there and start delivering.